Hello students. Today we shall be taking up Dust of Snow by Robert Frost. This is in your class 10 English book, First Flight. Robert Lee Frost was an American poet. He was honored frequently during his lifetime and he is the only poet to receive four Pulitzer Prizes for poetry. So a brief introduction to this poem, Dust of Snow Children. This poem presents a moment that seems simple, but it has a larger significance. So according to Robert Frost, a little thing touches a larger thing. He was of the opinion that what is unsaid, that part is the best part in any work of art. So the poet in minimum possible words has portrayed a winter landscape with the help of a snow laden hemlock tree with a crow flying out of it, sc scattering the soft snow all over the poet who is passing by under the tree. When the poem starts, the reader finds the poet in a depressed mood. Then three things, which are those three things, crow, hemlock and dust of snow. These three things are introduced by the poet. And traditionally, these have negative connotations. All these three are associated with uh, all these are associated with negative you know, connotations, but poet feels much better after he is in touch with even these trivial elements of nature. So basically, if I touch upon the theme slightly here for you, uh, it talks of this poem talks of the importance of small natural events in one's life and how nature is the best healer when it comes to healing. Okay. Let's quickly recite the poem. The way a crow shook down on me the dust of snow from a hemlock tree has given my heart a change of mood and saved some part of a day I had rude. Rhyming scheme is AB AB. This poem is an excellent example of enjambment. What is it? It is a literary device which refers to the practice of running lines from one text to the next without using any kind of punctuation marks to indicate a pause. So you can see that there are no punctuation marks in this whole poem. Stanza 1 explanation. The way a crow shook down on me the dust of snow from a hemlock tree. So the poet starts the poem by telling the reader how a crow shook down snow on him while he was standing under the hemlock tree. The snowflakes fall on the poet from a hemlock tree when a crow perched on the tree moved and therefore in the process made the snowflakes fall on him. Now before we go on to the next stanza, I want to take up the symbols that the poet has used so beautifully in this poem. Crow, hemlock tree and snow. Conventionally speaking, all these three symbols signify sorrow. For instance, children, crow is considered an ugly and inauspicious creature. It is a harbinger of doom and fear. A hemlock tree is poisonous. So when we hear of this tree, we associate it with death. And snow represents the hardships in one's life. Stanza 2 explanation has given my heart a change of mood and saved some part of a day I had rude. So according to Robert Frost, as I told you in the introduction also, that the unsaid part of the poetry is its best part. So in the poem, though he does not say anything directly, it is evident that he is referring to the so-called superstitious beliefs in various societies, which people blindly follow. For instance, if a cat crosses your path, if someone sneezes while you are leaving the house, etc., etc. So all these are considered superstitious beliefs and ill omens, right? So in the first stanza, he's talking of all these negative symbols. In the second stanza, the poet says that because of the snow falling on him, he finds himself partially relieved. His day just got a whole better. This event allowed him to see life from a different angle. Well, it is ironic that a creator linked with negative aspects of life should become a harbinger of positive change. So the expression of a day I had read basically means that the poet's melancholic mood had spoiled his day by making it dull, dreary and sad. But this depressed mood is uplifted when snowflakes fall on him and a crow becomes the reason for bringing this transformation 
or you can say upliftment in his mood so the poet makes these negative symbols instrumental in bringing a positive change in his mood all right so the poetic devices that have been employed in the poem are enjambment alliteration symbolism and imagery now let us finally conclude the poem so the poem shows that though our mental state depends upon our surroundings it can be changed the poet's day had not been going well but in the company of nature it got a whole better because the simple act of particles of snow falling on him made him happy this also suggests that little things do play a vital role in our in our lives nature can take away all the fear sorrow from our lives it is a perennial source of joy and at no point of time we should give up or we should you know let pessimism sink into our lives so we should always be optimistic thank you for watching and subscribing i hope you understood the whole poem thank you so much